Good morning. It's good to, good to see you today. And uh, as uh, Ronnie explained, you know, Pastor Richard and Lisa, I think the last I heard, they'll hopefully come in tomorrow or Tuesday. Um, but y'all, when he gets back, don't, don't judge him if he's gained some weight. Okay? <laughs> But I'm going to be real with you. I would. I'd be eating and eating and eating. Anyway. Anyway. It, it's funny because I, I told Ronnie before the service this morning, when I checked the schedule for October, I wasn't scheduled to speak. And, and please don't judge me, but I was, I was like, I can kind of relax. Because it's stressful coming up here, preparing and speaking to y'all wonderful, fine people. So I was kind of relieved. And then Thursday, about 5.30, Pastor Jason calls me and says, Troy, here's the situation, and we need you to preach, Sonny. And I was like, holiday hoobity whaty? <laughs> you want me to do what? But, you know, God is faithful, and he proves himself faithful. And honestly, you know, most of the time when I'm up here, I don't know about y'all, but I have a habit of making it about me anyway. Like, how, do, how am I going to look? What am I going to wear? What am I going to say? What am I going to do? You know, and it's about God anyway. It's about God and his people, his word going for us. So I'm not stressed out, so y'all don't be stressed. We're good. God's got this. In fact, let, let me read you a text. Pastor Richard sent this to me this morning. How many of you love you, Pastor? Because he knows how stressful it would be, especially with the time crunch. He, know, he knows Troy. Here's what he said. He said, hey, Pastor Troy, thanks so much for stepping in late and covering the teaching this morning. I'm praying for you, and I know it will be awesome with a capital A. You got this. See you soon. <laughs> when you get a message like that from your pastor, you know, man, you could, you could do all things, right? <laughs> you, could, you got it. But, but anyway, how I many wants a couple jokes? Y'all want any jokes? You don't want none? Okay, all right, all right. Let's share a couple of jokes with you. Uh, Brooks, this is for you. What did the roofer go, why did the roofer go to the doctor? Because he had shingles. <laughs> ah! They get better, I hope. <laughs> what do cows do on date night? They go to the movies. <laughs> what kind of tree fits on your hand? Palm tree. All right, here's one. A Sunday school teacher was discussing the Ten Commandments with her five- and six-year-olds. After explaining the commandment to honor thy father and thy mother, the teacher asked, is there a commandment that teaches us how to treat our brothers and sisters? And without missing the beat, the little boy answered, he said, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> now, I was the only child, so I, didn't, I don't know what that's about. But <laughs> Y'all want one more? I got one more. I didn't share it with the first service, but two little boys are sitting at, um, together in a church during a wedding ceremony, and the couple said, I do. And one of the little boys leaned over to the other and asked, I wonder how many wives a man can have. And the second little boy looked at him, his friend and said, man, you're an idiot. He said, you can have 16 wives. He said, what? He, said, he didn't say 16. He said, weren't you listening? The priest just said it. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. Okay. All right. Four times four is 16. Y'all are lively this morning. Y'all are good. Today's uh, sermon is we're going to talk about the word new. How many likes new stuff? I like new. You know, the Bible tells us that if we are in Christ, that we are a new creation. But what exactly does that mean to you and I? Everything in our natural world don't always feel new. The truth is our spirit is new at the time of a rebirth, and that gives us power to renew everything else in our natural world. However, it takes time. It don't happen instantaneously. But there's nothing like something new, maybe a new iPhone or a new house, a new outfit, or maybe like new shoes. Girl, girl loves some shoes, y'all. <laughs> new shoes or a new car. I remember uh, my car is 10 years old now, and y'all, I, I love my car and still do. It's getting old now. Paint's chipping really bad. But anyway, I was driving down the road. I ain't had the car two or three weeks, and all of a sudden a rock comes off and makes a crack right in front of my eyesight. And so every day I got to see that crack, and I'm like, it's just a car. It's just a car. Y'all feel that way about stuff? It's just the stuff. You know, worry about it. 
thankful for new things. Sometimes it's not material things. Sometimes it's a new uh, job or a new career. Maybe it's a new uh, ministry. Maybe it's a new season in life. Maybe you have a newborn. Maybe uh, you're newly married or maybe it's uh, uh, when you, everybody leaves the house. Uh, I haven't, empty nesters. Yes, yeah, thank you. Empty nesters. Y'all can play along. I like it when y'all talk to me. It could be anything, but something new. But the word new means different things. And here's a four-part definition of the word new. One is recent origin, production, or purchase. It's like something that's brand spanking new. Uh, lately come or been brought into being. It's like the new guy or the new system at work. Uh, different and better in physical condition. Maybe like you're replacing the old tires with new tires. And number four, a different moral quality replacing the old, like a new attitude a new outlook or a new lease on life. The Bible has a lot of examples about the power of new. Revelation 21, Jesus said, Behold, I make all things new. He's not talking about a new car or new shoes. He's talking about a new perspective, a new attitude, a new way of living. In Lamentations 3, right in the middle of the five miserable chapters of destruction, of Jerusalem, Jeremiah writes these words, Lord, your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. I am so thankful today that right in the middle of your mess, that mercies, God's mercies are new every day. Right in the middle of my junk, right in the middle of it, God is right there. His mercies are new. Every day is a gift. Every day is a chance to begin again. That's why even time, every 24 hours, you get a brand new day, a new start. See, God has the power to make our circumstances new again. He has the power to pull us out of hard places and difficult circumstances. He has the power to give us a fresh hope and a new outlook. I'm so thankful for that. Psalms 40, verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Amen. New. Somebody needs to hear this today, that God, you've been praying, you've been patiently waiting, but God has seen you and he's heard your cry. And I believe that he's working a plan out for you. You don't even know how it's working. You don't see the end result. It's okay. He's got you. He's got you right there in the palm of his hand, his righteous right hand. And let me tell you, that's a big old hand, his righteous right hand. He hears you. He's going to take you out of that mire and that mud. Now, some of you may come in. Let me read Psalms 98.1. It says, sing to the Lord a new song. He has done marvelous things. Has he ever done marvelous things for you? God, we want to sing to you today, a new song. Some of you might have come in here today singing a sad, sad song. How many Hee Haw fans I got out here? You, you remember Hee Haw? Yeah, ain't as many it was as the first service. So y'all going to have to help me out a little bit, little bit louder now, okay? I want y'all to help me with this. Some of y'all might have come in here singing this song, and when I point to you, you, you know what you're supposed to do. Oh, y'all know what, you Hee Haw fans, y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all might have had this song, gloom, despair, agony on me. Let's try it one more time. Gloom, despair, agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Y'all did good. Y'all did good. I don't know if y'all did better in the first service, but... I don't know. But God wants to put a new song in your heart today. He wants to put a new pep in your step. He wants to put a new glide in your stride today. He wants to put a new song in your heart, in your mouth, in your soul today. And he can do it. Man, I felt that thing right there. That got, that got personal. The Word of God gives hope and confidence in a world that has no hope. When we stand on his Word... His word has the power to change our perspective and our attitude, and it will and can make all things new. God is ready and willing today to do something new and fresh in your life, in your life and in your life. 
Do you want it? Do you need it today? Isaiah 43, 19 says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. But see, in order for God to do a new thing, sometimes we got to let the old things die. And that's where it gets hard. That's where it gets hard. we got to be willing to let some of them old things go. Jesus actually said it this way, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it cannot bear fruit. Something has to die before the new can come. Something has to be surrendered in your heart and life before God can bless you with the new. Are you ready for something new today? Amen. Let's look at Mark chapter 2 today. It says, starting with verse 18, it says, Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, How is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. You see, John's disciples and their Pharisees were both fasting. And it says, some people come up and says, okay, why are y'all fasting? But Jesus... Your disciples are not. And here's how Jesus told me. He said, how can, the, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot do so as long as I am with them. You see, fasting is a discipline. And I saw this slide yesterday, and I, I want to share it with you. This is not a fast right here. Let's see that slide. The friend says, I thought you were fasting. Me, I am. Well, you just ate three donuts. Yeah, I know, but I wanted four. <laughs> That's not fasting. Jensen Franklin talks about how if you're, if you, when you're fasting, if you're, not, if you're not denying yourself, if you're not spending time in the Word, if you're not seeking God, if you're not praying, doing these things, you're just dieting. You're not really fasting. Fasting removes the distractions and removes the barriers so we can fully focus on God. You see, when we fast, we are crucifying this old flesh, this dirty flesh, and we feed our spirit. When we fast, we purposely put the desires and cravings on the back burner and draw close to God. And you know what happens when you draw close to God? He draws close to you. So Jesus was saying in verse 19, he says, My disciples do not need to fast so that they can draw near to me. He says, I'm, I'm right here with them. He told the Pharisees and John's disciples, you guys are missing the whole point. In verse 20, he said, but the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken, and on that day, you, you would need to fast. So in other words, you don't fast when the bridegroom's here. When I'm here, you rejoice. We feast. But you guys do not even recognize who is standing right in front of you, Jesus said. And in verse 21 and 22, he gave us two metaphors. He said, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into wineskins. Oh, wine skin. Otherwise, the wine will burst with the skins, and both the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins. In other words, Jesus was saying, I did not come to patch up an old system. He said, I came to do something new. I came to usher in something new. Listen, the new covenant is not a patch on the Old Testament. It's something brand new today. And the Pharisees and the disciples missed Jesus. He missed, they missed the whole point. They were holding on to the old wineskin of religion and tradition. That old wineskin of the old law. So Jesus said you cannot patch the old garment with a new cloth. In the same way you can't put new wine in the old wineskin. Jesus did not come to patch up your old life. He came to give you a new life. To give you an abundant life. To do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. That new wine had to come forth from a new wineskin, not the old. The old represents the legalism, the law, and all the religious ceremonies. The new wine represents the good news of the gospel, that Jesus came, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. 
2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new creation or a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. You know, at the precise moment when we gave our hearts to Christ, he put a deposit of his spirit right on the inside of us. In Psalms 51, David said, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. You see, it's through our relationship with God that we have the power to bring the new in the spirit to the old and the natural. See, God has a part to play. You have a part to play. God has a part to play. I have a part to play. In faith, see, God makes, God makes you a new creation by what he can do. And only he can do. Only his power can make us new. But there are some things that we got to do. We got to choose to walk in an attitude of gratitude. We got to choose to renew our minds, to change the way we think, to change the way we reflect on life. We must put off the old self and put on the new self to be like God. Colossians 3 says says it this way. Since then, you've been raised with Christ, a new creation, Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not earthly things. But you know that's easier said than done because we live in this natural world and it's so easy for us to always get focused on things, on our circumstances, on our anxiety or fears or whatever you struggle with, whatever your vice is. God wants to make it new today. The renewing process is gradual. It's often slow transformation. It's not instantaneously like our salvation. It takes time. It's one degree at a time from glory to glory, one revelation to another. This is called regeneration. Regeneration like a buried seed. See, when you bury a seed, it takes time. But over time, as you water it and nurture it, it begins to grow. It begins to bear fruit. And that's the way our our spirit man is. As we trust God and let go of the old, guess what? God pulls out the new into our lives. He changes all things and makes them new. Aren't you thankful for that today? Now let's read Ephesians chapter 4. This is uh, 17 through 24, so bear with me. It says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. You know, you got to be careful when you want to do your own thing because God, uh, that heart will become hard. What's the Bible talk about how bad the heart is, deceitful above all? Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, to take it off, put off, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. See, God's got a part to play, and we have a part to play. We must choose to walk in that new attitude in our minds, in our everyday life. A decision to follow Jesus. And it's not a, it's a one-time decision, but I'm telling you, it's a daily walk. And sometimes it's an hour-by-hour walk when you're really going through it. But thank God his mercies are new every day. You see, we got to turn off that old tune to the world and we, as we begin singing. We don't need to keep singing songs of depression, songs of defeat, songs like gloom, despair, agony on me. Huh, y'all still with me? Like that? Y'all good? No. See, we need to start singing a new song, new attitude, new perspective. That's what he does. He changes our perspective. Start singing songs of freedom and deliverance. Joy and victory. This is an old song I sang the first one. Y'all, y'all bear with me, but when I hear phrases and verses, I go back in time because I, I, like, I like music. 
Here's the old song that says, um, Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Pray in the spirit and understanding. Oh, magnify the Lord. I sing some of y'all singing with me. I'm not going to have a concert or anything. Sometimes we got to stir ourselves up, man. We got to get a new song in our heart. Don't live in that defeated mindset any longer. When we describe something that has been made new again, oftentimes we use the word, or the prefix re, re. And you can attach that prefix onto almost any word, and it describes the transformation of being made new again. So let's run through these real quickly. That's about five of them or so, six. The first one is renew. Renew means to make new again, a new beginning, a fresh start, a new, la- new outlook. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, his pleasing, and perfect will. How many wants to live in the perfect will of God? I got it. I'm going to tell you how to do it. Get in his word and renew your mind. Renew your mind. See, God wants us to renew our mind today by giving us a new perspective and a new vision, by giving us hope. Hope, hope in a fallen world. So we need to renew. The next one is relief. The word relief is free from pain, burden, or difficulty. You know, that's what the team did this weekend when they went to uh, Morganton. They were given relief. When I saw all that destruction a while ago, I I don't know, I I look at things different sometimes, I guess, but Carolina lost a football game yesterday, y'all. And if if any of y'all know, it was ridiculous how they lost. And it just frustrated me. But when I saw pictures of real life, that game don't mean nothing. destruction and it's not always the physical some of us here today maybe your life is in destruction maybe it's shattered and you need some relief today I got good news God can do it he can give you relief he can do exceedingly abundantly Psalms 4 1 says answer me when I call you my righteous God Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. If, you're, if you need relief today, get Psalms 4.1 and let that resonate in your heart today. God can do it and he will do it. Jesus came to carry your burdens. He came to give us relief and rest today in him. In Matthew 11, he tells us, he says, I come to... He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. Are you troubled today? I got good news. There's hope. There's hope in him. Another one is re-energize. Y'all say re-energize. It means to give fresh vitality, enthusiasm to. See, there are people here this morning, no doubt, who have lost their energy. You've lost your passion. Your get up and go has got up and gone. And you know, it don't matter. It don't matter if you've been saved a week or if you're the most seasoned saint in here. It can happen to anybody. When we lose our energy we begin experiencing something called burnout. And oftentimes when we have burnout, we start doing the wrong things. We begin to isolate ourselves and separate ourselves from coming to church, from from praying, from reading, from being around our brothers and sisters who encourage and sharpen us. We want to hide out. That's not how you overcome burnout. You overcome burnout by creating a fresh wind of God's spirit in your life. And it's time for some of us to, be re- to refuel your passion and zeal for God and be re-energized today. How do you do that? Draw near to him. Draw near to him and he'll draw near to you. So Isaiah 40, 31 says, 
but those who hope, some translations say trust, those who hope or trust in the Lord will renew their strength. It don't say might or possibly. It says will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Take these words and let them burn in your heart and your mind today. Let them, be, let them renew your mind. Where is your hope today? Where is your trust? Is it in other people? If it is, let me tell you, you're in trouble. Because people will let you down, won't they? They don't mean to. Well, at least not sometimes. Maybe your hope and trust is in uh, yourself. Mm -mm, that won't work. Maybe it's in the government. No, mm -mm, that ain't going to work. Maybe it's in your job or your livelihood. Nope, mm -mm, that ain't going to work either. There's only one that gives real hope. There's only one that gives real peace. There's only one that can give real joy, that joy unspeakable and full of glory, and it comes from on high, it comes from God. Amen. And he changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And pastor preached this message about a month ago. He told us that we need to start born, burning the oil again and not the wick. Is your oil dry today? You need to be refilled. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they what? Will be filled. They will be filled. The worship team can come on, come on back. How are we doing? Yeah, we're good. The next one is revive. Revive. Revive means to make alive again. Psalms 119 says, My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. God, revive our hearts today. He wants you and I to experience a fresh encounter with him so that he can breathe new life back into you and I again. In Isaiah 57, 15, it says, For this is what the high and exalted one says, He who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in a high and holy place. This is what God is saying. He said, but I also with the one, I live with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly, to revive the heart of the contrite. That is a word for some of, some of you today, some of you watching and listening. He's making all things new again. He's making all things come alive again. He's reviving you if you want it. The next one is restore. You know, I thought about this driving here this morning. I was coming down 301 out by Sam's. And uh, how many remember the, the, the big flood that hit here in that area? How devastated it was. And if you go by there now, they even, they even put in another dollar tree. We need another dollar store here, y'all. They'll put one everywhere. They'll put one in this closet right here if we let them. But if you go by there now, you would never know it. It's been restored. It's being restored. And there's some of you here today, through whatever circumstances, whatever situations, maybe some, maybe some other decisions that maybe that you, can I, let me just come here and talk to you. Maybe it's decisions that some of you made on your own and you just you brought some devastation or maybe it's just life happened on its own you didn't mean for it to happen you're trying to do everything right and life just throws you a monkey wrench and all you see is chaos you don't see no hope but the same way I rode by Sam's this morning and saw all that restoration God is still in the restoring business and what he did for one, he'll do for another. Your best days are ahead of you. If God be for you, who could be against you today? So I don't know what you're going through. 
And honestly, I don't even need to know. I just want to tell you there's hope today. It's not going to always be like that. It's not always going to be dry. There's going to be a cloud coming. There's going to be rain coming. God's got so much in store for you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't quit. I have quit before. It's been years ago. I have quit. I said, I give up. I'm not trying anymore. And God said, okay, go ahead. That caused destruction. But he's a restorer. He's so good. His mercies are new every day. Jeremiah 30, 17 says, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. He wants to replace your fear and discouragement today with faith and courage and hope. Two more verses and we're done. 1 Peter 5, 10. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong. He will make you firm and he will make you steadfast. See, God can do things that you can't do for yourself. And today I want, let's make Psalms 5112 our anthem today. It says, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. God, restore unto us today the joy of our salvation. Sustain us. You guys can stand to your feet. And I want to make this invitation. If you're here today and you've never surrendered your heart to the Lord, or maybe, maybe you don't even know what that means. All it means is that you're just putting your faith in Him. You don't, what's great about it is you don't have to have all the answers. He's got them. You don't have to know how it's going to work out. And you don't have to come to Him perfect. You come to Him just the way you are. So if you've never surrendered your heart to Jesus, given, sold out to Him, I'm going to be right down here this morning. I'm not going to embarrass you. Would you take a step of faith and come down and let me pray with you? I just want to put my arms around you and pray with you. And the rest of you, if, if any parts of this message touch your heart today, if you, need, if you need to be re-energized, if you need to be redeemed, if you need to be restored, if you need to... I see you. I'm coming to you. I don't know what you need today. But don't leave here and not get it. God's got it. So as we go into this last song, give it to him. Whatever it is, your family, your child, your job, your health, your fear, your depression, your anxiety, your hopes, your dreams, give it all to him and see what he does with it. Your best days are ahead of you.